why thousands of people feel forced to travel abroad for better and cheaper dental work. We have people that are quoted for really what's essential work, um, you know, £60,000. £60,000. More people in the Midlands are travelling abroad for dental work than ever before, and that's not just because of a shortage of NHS dentists. We've discovered real concerns that British dentists are opting for easier and cheaper treatment, like extractions, rather than doing what's best for the patient. Nick Lawrence went to find out why. Teeth. They define how we feel. Even if people actually weren't looking at my teeth when they were talking to me. I felt that they probably were. It really, really eroded my confidence. And we trust the NHS to fix any problems. I really did not want to have a tooth removed and have uh, a gap because I didn't have an option. But is NHS dentistry in good health? I believe that patients are suffering because they're not getting the quality of care they need. Back in 2006, the way in which dentists are paid across the West Midlands was changed and it had a knock-on effect in how patients are treated, as this woman from Birmingham discovered. I had an infection which started up in one tooth, um, horrendously painful. I went to the dentist and he actually cut the nerve out of the tooth, uh, so the tooth effectively died. It couldn't actually give me any more pain, but it, it was dead um, and it became very brittle prone to discoloration and that infection then spread from tooth to tooth to tooth and the dentist just kept taking the nerves out of my teeth so I ended up with all my upper jaw along the front not having any nerves in my teeth at all. Julia needed complex treatment. It simply wasn't available on the NHS. Dentures were an option but I really just could not consider that. I couldn't conceive having to have dentures I really really couldn't um, uh, another really awful option that was planned to me was to attend um, a dental hospital over a period of two years and go once a week and let the students um, practice upon my teeth in fact we discovered that since the introduction of the new NHS dental contract there has been a big fall in the amount of complex treatments such as root canal work but the number of tooth extractions has gone up for some reason dentists seem to be removing teeth rather than treating them could it be the new payment system I visited this dentist in Birmingham to find out how dentists are paid if you are undertaking a treatment, be it a difficult or easy root filling in this instance, but be it a 10 minute root filling or a one hour root filling, uh, the time it takes to complete, you are getting paid the same amount of money. We've received no complaints about this dentist and patients we've spoken to have nothing but praise for the treatment he provides. But the Patients Association is adamant that some dentists are not carrying out treatments they don't make money on. It costs them money to do complex treatment such as crowns and bridge work and root treatment. They're better off from a financial point of view, unfortunately, just doing simple extractions and dentures. And when you don't get the right treatment, it's not just your mouth that suffers. Even if people actually weren't looking at my teeth when they were talking to me, I felt that they probably were and making a judgment on me and feeling that I'd neglected them, whereas actually nothing could be further from the truth. So Julia, like thousands of other NHS patients, found another place to get her dental treatment. Budapest. Not exactly what you would imagine to be everyone's first choice for a checkup, but with the NHS performing less and less complex dental treatment, more and more people are being forced to look abroad to get essential complex dental work done especially since those changes were made to the way dentists are paid. We discovered from the Office of National Statistics that since 2006, the number of people seeking treatment abroad has more than doubled. 
So much so that one agency now specialises in providing dental packages for disillusioned NHS patients. They have been very busy. We're certainly seeing um, growth year on year and it hasn't slowed down, it hasn't stopped. You know, whether without the NHS contracts our business would now have levelled off, it's hard to say, but we've certainly seen things carry on picking up and picking up. And Simon had some unbelievable news about how much some UK dental work costs. We have people that are quoted for, really, what's essential work, um, you know, £60,000. £60,000? £60, £60,000. And this is not cosmetic treatment. This is essential work that people need. Seriously, it's not uncommon. And that makes people look at different options. Julia was quoted over £20,000 by her dentist to have implants rather than dentures. In Budapest, the work was done for £6,000. But back in the West Midlands, 19 new NHS practices have opened since the introduction of the new dental contract. Is this likely to improve quality of care and stem the flow of people seeking treatment abroad? Unlikely, according to the Patients Association. I have a feeling that NHS dentistry in 10 years' time may just be a core service for basic treatment and extractions, and that would be very sad for the patients of this country. At the moment, um, patients haven't got a good future to look forward to as far as quality care in the NHS. Time to talk to the man responsible for the 2006 dental contract, the Chief Dental Officer. What about the drop in complex treatments since the introduction of that new contract? It's about looking at what you get paid at over a year. This is a contract value for a year to provide the right clinical treatment for your patients. And the, f the fact that lots and lots and lots of this complex treatment is being provided clearly demonstrates that the dentist will do what's right for their patients. Although it's lower than it was than, uh, it, it, than you, You've always got incentives in any system and it's important to have the right incentives. And the right incentive now is to focus on prevention and to intervene less. Some treatments dentists would actually lose money on. Dentists are well paid, very clinically minded, very ethically minded people as a whole and they will always act in the best interest of their patients. Last year you say that they don't do the, the, the complex treatments but there were a million crowns and bridges carried out by NHS dentists last year. I mean, to which honest, that, which that's a meaningless figure because there's no context to it. I, think a, I don't think a million crowns and bridges is a meaningless figure. But, but you need context for any figures. You could well, say 10, I mean, it doesn't really matter. What's the context? What's the context at which you're giving that figure? The, the dental profession as a whole and dentists mm. individually will always act, in, the vast majority will always act in the best interest of their patients. Undoubtedly, most NHS dentists will act in the best interests of their patients. But that doesn't explain the massive increase in the number of people seeking complex treatment abroad. I think NHS dentistry at the moment is in a state of flux and turmoil in that the aims of NHS dentistry, especially as far as quality of care, are not being met. What's your view of NHS dentistry now? I really don't have any faith in it, to be perfectly honest. I feel that it, on balance, it probably let me down. Um, I can't actually find an NHS dentist for my two children. I have to pay private care for them. Um, which I do because I want them to have good dentistry. So I really don't have much, much faith in it at all.